Hello, I'm Dr. Rostenberg, and I want to personally thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and I will give my recipe for your healing process. Now, I wish we could achieve our results with just diet and lifestyle alone, but supplements really do make the difference. And to help you with that, you'll have an opportunity to order supplements at a discounted rate. We'll see you then. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rostenberg again from Beyond MTHFR and I have a very important video to share with you today. It's not going to be the big uh, in-depth biochemistry style of video, but it is going to be a very important educational piece on stomach function. And what I'm sharing with you today is going to be you know, built around the idea of how do we heal the hiatal hernia and how the hiatal hernia interferes with digestion and of course people with methylation issues and other biochemical imbalances um, you know, have a lot of digestive issues as you've seen in my other videos. And so one of the th most important things that I look for in my patients, whether I'm working with them in my office in Boise, Idaho, or whether we're working over the phone, is the idea of a hiatal hernia. Now, I didn't know what the hiatal hernia was before I went and got my you know, doctorate and became a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, but you know, just because we, doesn't, we don't know something exists doesn't mean it can't be affecting you. And so a lot of times what patients are sharing with me is that they have uh, a lot of acid reflux, they've got chronic GERD, they have uh, pain in their upper uh, abdomen near just below the rib cage. They, sometimes they say that they wake up in the middle of the night with heart palpitations and panic attacks and anxiety attacks that always happen either at night or in the morning right before they get out of bed. But they don't seem to happen when they're up standing around, walking around and waking, you know, when they're awake. And so I had many, many, many patients share this with me, this same story, and I started to scratch my head and say, well, what is this? What's really going on here? How come all these sim patients have the same symptoms? So what, what I'm sharing with you today is that the hiatal hernia is very common. Uh, the stomach, you know, exists at the upper part of your abdomen, kind of on the left side. If you draw a line from your sternum to your belly button, the stomach is a little bit to the left of that. And, you know, it's not like it's glued down or screwed in place or welded in place. This stuff moves around. And so based on different health conditions, like, you know, this guy, he's, you know, hasn't, he has metabolic uh, syndrome, he's got vis abdominal obesity, he's been a smoker, probably been under stress, and as his health has degenerated, his stomach has wiggled up into his chest cavity. And that's the real problem with hiatal hernias is that the part of the stomach called the lower esophageal sphincter, which should be right at the diaphragm, actually gets pushed way up inside of your chest cavity. And there's not a lot of room in your chest cavity to begin with, and if you put part of the stomach up inside the diaphragm into the chest cavity, the likelihood of you irritating the heart goes up significantly. So I started to look at this in the research, as I do with all of my questions, and I was pretty much blown away uh, because if you have atrial fibrillation, otherwise known as heart palpitations, sometimes you know, uh, leading to panic attacks and chest pain, someone's compressed like an elephant standing on your chest. You may even end up in the ER once or twice or more than that thinking you're having a heart attack and all they tell you is, uh, you know, it's your stomach, you have acid reflux, here's some acid blocking drugs and, you know, have a nice day. So bodies don't make mistakes. They don't invent symptoms to mess with us and, you know, try to screw with our head. They're just telling us what's going on through the symptoms that we get. Unfortunately, symptoms are not, you know, a language we understand very well, like English, French, German, or, you know, emails or text messages. But trust me when I tell you bodies never make mistakes and symptoms are there to educate us about what the problem is. And so when I went into PubMed, I was absolutely floored to realize that atrial fibrillation is 21 times more common in people with a hiatal hernia. It, mind-blowing information. This is, you know, recent study within the last 10 years. And you can just see that all these, the blue is atrial fibrillation and hiatal hernia, and this is atrial fibrillation in the general population. I mean, look at the discrepancy, 21 times higher. So obviously, anybody who has heart palpitations, difficulty breathing, 
panic attacks, especially when they lie down, chronic acid reflux, chronic GERD, you know, irritable bowel. We could get into even talking about SIBO and candida problems. Anyone with this type of an issue has a hiatal hernia until proven otherwise. I am not a betting person, I'm not a gambler, but I'll tell you that 21X are pretty good odds. So you have a hiatal hernia until proven otherwise. More data to just confirm this, this is a case study that talks about a, an elderly woman who was uh, failing to thrive, she was losing weight, couldn't maintain her uh, healthy tissue, she was just wasting away basically and had a major heart flutter and they couldn't figure out what it was. They figured out, oh, she has a hiatal hernia because they could see on their testing that the hernia was literally pushing against the heart as the heart was trying to beat. And they surgically reduced this. Uh, you do not have to use surgery as I'm going to show you in this video, although maybe in severe cases like this surgery makes sense. But they were able to get the hiatal hernia back uh, reduced and out of the way and then the heart calmed down and her symptoms went away. So another just proof that this concept is real. Now we have GERD associated with AFib also, and so more, you know, this is a research study from 2012, Public Library of Science, and basically they're saying that GERD was independently associated with, you know, having AFib, and I'm looking at this data saying this just confirms what I've seen in my clinic and what I've noticed in, all, uh, in a lot of my methylation patients and my chronic patients is there is a problem with the stomach in almost every case that comes uh, into our office or comes into as it comes into our clinic as a patient and as I've said over and over again digestion is the foundation of your health it's the foundation of of really your life and how you nourish yourself how you detoxify and so fixing digestive problems is always step one it's primary to everything else you want to work on uh, that's deeper in your system and so the hiatal hernia is a huge part of that so I'm going to pause here for a minute and let you look at a video I put together that um, kind of goes over how we how we adjust the hiatal hernia in our office so take a look at that and then I'll have a couple more slides for you at the end all right everyone good afternoon I know there's been a lot of interest in how to identify and how to treat the hiatal hernia now I'm gonna give you a disclaimer I went to school for my undergraduate and I went to school for five additional years to earn my doctorate to have a license to be able to get you know to charge money for this to help people so I'm not saying that to discourage you from doing this at home I'm just saying this is not medical advice this is not how to treat a problem this is just an example of how the hiatal hernia would be uh, adjusted in an office like mine and this is exactly the way that I'm going to do it um, this is how I t show my patients to do it at home as well. So in other words, you're going to see me treat, uh, show how I uh, treat one of my staff members. And this would be the same way that you would do it at home. So I hope this video gives you some help understanding how it works, seeing it, and maybe for those of you who don't have access to a doctor like myself or someone in your area who can help you, that this is something you can do on your own. So what we're going to do here, basically with the hiatal hernia, based on the anatomy, of how the body works. Um, you know, the stomach is essentially pressed up inside the diaphragm. That's the whole problem. Part of the intestinal contents have been shifted and moved into the chest cavity. The body wasn't designed to be that way, and it creates a lot of symptoms from, you know, mild acid reflux to panic attacks, heart palpitations, um, you know, going to the ER with, you know, massive blood pressure issues and crazy symptoms because the body's freaking out because the heart and the stomach are rubbing together. So the way we, we're going to do this with each patient, um, I'm a little bit specific, but I'm just going to show you, show you the general method. So the stomach is actually on the left side. If you draw a line down the middle, the stomach mainly sits on the left side. So we're going to move the stomach down towards the left hip. That's the best advice, most common area. And it's a bit like moving a water balloon around, if you can imagine that. So the way we do this is you find the end of the sternum right here, it's called the xiphoid. You don't push on that, that's tender. You move down a few inches, maybe an inch or two below that. And you, you, I use two hands, I don't stab them, but I use like a flat contact that's firm. And so the first, there's two steps. The first step is to take a breath in. Thank you, Christy, and let your air out. And as, a, as the person breathes out, you pull the skin to tension on round one. And we do it again, take another breath in, and then let your air out. 
and then we, on the second one is when we pull as they breathe out towards this hip. Now, let's say this is a six-year-old and I'm a parent trying to fix this at home. So I'm going to use less force, and if I'm a 40-year-old, you know, CrossFit athlete uh, on the table, I'm going to use more force. This just depends on the size of the patient. But um, this is something you would want to do before you eat and after you eat at home. That'd be ideal. So you can even do it to yourself. So again, you put both fingers here, you take a breath in, you let your air out. As you blow out, you bring your skin to tension, do another breath in, and then let your air out again. And again, you're just pushing the water balloon down and kind of to the left. I, I don't have any more technical information for you on that, but that's the best way to do it. And just doing that consistently can make really big changes. It can improve how well you breathe and certainly improve how well you digest. So again, come over here one more time, um, if you would, get a little closer so they can so we can just have a view of this. Okay, so again, it's two-hand contact. Two in contact right below the xiphoid. The patient breathes in, breathe out, and you pull to you pull to tension, and do it again. Breathe in, and on the second time they breathe out, you just move the stomach down with some considerable force towards this hip. And when the basically when the diaphragm is going up, you're pulling the stomach down. You're you're moving them in different directions. And that's how we fix it at Red Mountain Natural Medicine. So thanks for uh, checking out our video. So I hope you enjoyed that short video about the hiatal hernia. Um, you know, let me know in the comments if that was helpful or not. I know there's been a lot of requests. Uh, we could uh, love to hear your feedback on that. And, and just in closing on the stomach itself, it just has a phenomenal amount of importance to how we feel. No matter what the emotion, no matter what you're stressed about, no matter what is causing emotional strain in your life, that emotional strain puts stress on your heart. People with ACE and AGT and ADD1 genes, people who are COMT++, MAOA, uh, and all the, a lot of these other complicated gene issues get worse digestive symptoms than other people, uh, especially when we're under stress. And so I'm just, I've seen it pay off time and time again to take care of the stomach first and the gut as a whole before you go and work on methylation. And I think, you know, Sterling Hill, if you follow her on Facebook, she's very adamant about the same thing and there's there's definitely some wisdom to that and so this was published you know back in 1969 that you know we need acid in our stomach to prevent reflux um, again more studies more uh, excerpts from the same article this is the lower esophageal sphincter it has to it has to close very very tightly to prevent stuff from splashing up and it actually requires acid to shut this valve Giving an acid blocker does make the symptom go away, but it literally does the exact opposite thing your body needs. And over time, there's a big consequence and some serious side effects of those medications. And so, you know, more recent study from 2002, they're basically saying that, um, you know, the, the cause of people with all this reflux and panic attacks and arrhythmia is not just the hiatal hernia itself, but it's also low stomach acid. So I found that about 90% of my patients are low in stomach acid. Some people have uh, gastritis or some atrophic gastritis issues and they don't do, do so great with betaine HCL, but most people do, so it's worth uh, giving it a try if, uh, if you think that your digestion could be improved, especially your stomach function. So thanks a lot everyone for listening and stay, stay tuned because over the next few months we are getting a book published. Uh, it's gonna, I, I'm just going to give the book away for free. It's all my work on methylation and gut and I just want as many people as possible to have uh, access to it and, and get that information uh, in their hands. So I'm going to do my best to get that out at no cost to everyone and uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching this video and sharing it with your friends and family. I personally believe, as I'm sure you do as well, that educating ourselves about what it truly means to be healthy is the only way we're gonna change healthcare. I have created a website as a resource for you. To take advantage of this information, navigate to www.beyondmthfr.com and take a look around. In addition to blogs and articles I have written, 
you will find a tab on the menu labeled Protocols. It is a growing list of tools that I use in my office to help support my patients. You will find background information on common health conditions. You will find a detailed supplement protocol and you will find dietary advice to support the body's natural healing process. You will also have access to order recommended supplements at a discounted rate and have them shipped to your front door. I'm giving you the tools that I use and practice every day to help you overcome health challenges and live a happier, healthier life. I have done my best to give you that information and you will find it on these protocol pages. If you are looking for more help than simply what supplements should, should you take or what diet should you follow, I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you to come to Boise and see me. Let me and my team and my staff take care of you. We have patients coming from all over the country and all over the area on a regular basis and there's room for you too. Now if coming all this way to Boise is too big of a commitment, then please pick up the phone or email my office. We can work together from a distance.